Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. RetroArch just got an update and this is what you need to know. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, today, December 6th, or maybe yesterday, December 6th, depending on when I put this video out, RetroArch released version 1.9.14. And just a friendly heads up here, I've explained this in a previous video, but if you are using RetroArch on Android and you've installed it through the Google Play Store, you are a few versions behind. It's currently sitting at version 1.9.12. If you want the latest and greatest, you'll have to download the APK right from RetroArch's website. Now, if you got RetroArch on Steam, you probably noticed that RetroArch had an update and that will bring you to version 1.9.14. So now let's go over what exactly has been updated in this new version. And we'll start out here with what Libretro has highlighted. Vulcan, avoid hard crash when capturing screenshot in emulating mailbox. If you're familiar with first in, first out, if you're familiar with vSync, you probably know exactly what mailbox emulation is. If you don't, to keep things at a really high level, it doesn't really have to deal with an actual mailbox here. We'll just go over the important bits. If you use Vulkan and you're emulating in full screen mode and you try to take a screenshot, chances are you'll encounter a crash, a hard crash that crashes right out of RetroArch. That may not happen anymore. Now for Steam updates, they've added a bunch of cores here as DLC and I've gone over a few of them in a previous video. Caprice 32 is Amstrad CPC, Race is Neo Geo Pocket Color, uh, Game Boy Advance SP, Pro System is Atari 7800, uh, we have PS1, UAE is the Amiga, Vice is Commodore and BSNES is the beloved SNES. We've also got 26 cores now on RetroArch with 27th on the way, which will be easy RPG. They've also made a bunch of net play improvements. So if you play RetroArch over the internet, you might be happy at some of these. These are very good quality of life improvements. For example, adding a setting to allow or disallow players other than the host from pausing the game. Thank you, that was very frustrating added a sublabel for netplay max connections, changed unknown commands to be ignored instead of forcing a disconnection. Also an awesome thing here. They've fixed a bunch of memory leaks here and one last thing I wanna point out, they've made an improvement to the lobby viewer. It should now make a distinction between passworded rooms and non-passworded rooms. That gets a big thumbs up. On the Wii U here, this is actually a pretty big one. Pico Drive is now available, so you can play 32X games on the Wii U. And last up here, they've made a bunch of improvements to a bunch of different cores. I'm gonna leave a link to these changes in the description below. I do recommend checking them out especially if you use one of these cores, because knowledge is power. The more you know about it, the more you can use this information to your advantage. Dolphin here, I'm just gonna go over a couple. Dolphin here, for example, uh, shake motions to middle mouse. Map nunchuck and Wiimote shake to the middle mouse button. That's a big plus here. Fix real Wiimote. Tested with a few games on a dolphin bar works fine. And if you're wondering, AFICT means as far as I can tell. So they've tested it out with a few games. There might still be an issue here and there, but as far as they can tell, everything is working. They say it still needs continuous scanning core option on to pair the Wiimote. In Beetle PSX here, they've added core options to change the crosshair color and remove light gun warnings. For PCSX2, a core I'm sure a lot of people have grown to love. Add fast texture and validation, hack core option, add core options for categories. That's an awesome thing here. Game Boy Advance SP, GBSP, they've improved the audio frame pacing, so they've helped reduce some of the crackling audio in some of the ROMs. And speaking of audio, for PPSSPP, they also had some audio tweaks. Now that's about all I'm gonna cover in this video. I could be here for a very long time explaining every single detail, but instead, I'm just gonna leave a link in the description below and I highly recommend checking it out. Especially here if you use Lockup because there have been some improvements too. At the end of the day here, RetroArch continues to get better and continues to give you reasons to try it out if you haven't already. I wanna give a huge shout out to the developers behind RetroArch for continuing to be awesome. Anyways, that is all I've got for this video. Let me know your thoughts about RetroArch in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts about version 1.9.14 in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.